Hey y'all, Scott here, and what am I doing you just asked? Well, I'm currently coping with the atrocity I'm about to experience known as Star Fox Zero by drinking this top-of-the-line alcohol. Its taste derives from my thumb placement, which I refuse to change. If anything I need to know is underneath my thumb, well, it can wait, because I have stars to fox in. But before we do so, let's go back to a little year I like to call 1993. Star Fox has had a pretty rough life when you take a step back and look. The first two games are generally lauded as the pinnacles of the series, more so Star Fox 64. After that, the series never really reached the critical or commercial heights of its origins. The series swapped developers a lot, Rare, Namco, Q Games, and most recently Platinum Games, which just kind of gave me a, we don't care about Star Fox, just give it to some third party kind of vibe. The series went on a long hiatus after the release of Star Fox Command on the Nintendo DS, with only a remake of Star Fox 64 being released for the Nintendo 3DS in the 10 year span between new Star Fox games. Finally, at E3 2014, a new Star Fox was officially announced, but in a bit of a subdued manner. Instead of a grand reveal, Nintendo opted to mainly just tease it and show the press the game running behind closed doors. It was in the tech demo phase at the time, so this was to be expected. Most press stated that the demo they were able to view was incredibly primitive, looking almost like the original Star Fox, but now in HD. Miyamoto later stated that Star Fox for Wii U was slated for a 2015 release, he just needed to find the right developer. At E3 2015, Star Star Fox Zero was officially announced for Wii U, being developed by Platinum Games, kicking off Nintendo's E3 digital event. I remember trying to tell myself it looked great, but deep down I knew it looked pretty disappointing. The first thing most pointed out were the graphics, as they looked unbelievably underwhelming. But hey, the game had a fairly quick development time, as it was in the tech demo stage just one year ago. I stayed optimistic that when the game released it would look far better, and hey, it was even delayed to 2016 later down the line, so I had a ton of hope that Star Fox Zero would become the game that Star Fox fans have been waiting for for years this game is not good. Star Fox Zero utilizes a completely different control scheme from any other Star Fox game or game in general. A cockpit view is shown on the gamepad while a traditional Star Fox view is shown on the TV. You can more easily traverse the landscape on the TV screen as it's easier to see oncoming obstacles, however the reticle shown on the gamepad is far more accurate, meaning if you want to take out enemies efficiently, you're going to want to look down there. Motion controls are also used for the reticle, so the entire game you're going to be looking up and down constantly while also flailing the gamepad around. This concept had some promise, and with Miyamoto championing this control setup, saying it was innovative and game changing, I had hoped that it would become a welcome addition to the Star Fox franchise. In my opinion, these controls ask too much of the player, to the point where it's just not fun at all, and more so becomes frustrating. Frustrating because when I die in this game, I always have the saying pop in my head, well, if this control like Star Fox 64, because this game is basically just Star Fox 64 with HD visuals. Not a remake, however, it's more of a reboot or a retelling. Can I see the benefits to this control scheme? Sure! Being able to look around independent of the TV screen is pretty cool. You can even look around during certain cutscenes. However, just the plain flying and shooting gameplay just doesn't play well with this concept. It overcomplicates every enemy you see on the screen. Rather than just pointing and shooting, I have to look down at a completely separate screen to shoot at the enemy, but now my attention's taken off of the TV, so only God knows what's going on up there. That's a major feeling I had with this game. Whenever I would focus on one screen to do a specific task, I would take damage from something I didn't see on the other screen. No matter where I look, it comes with a hindrance. I think this control setup would work leagues better in a much slower paced game. With Star Fox, you're flying through so much stuff, especially in the standard R-Wing on rail section. What's bad about this is that the fast paced sections of Star Fox Zero seem like they would be a blast with standard controls. Sector Omega would be so much fun if I wasn't taking damage all the time looking down at the gamepad or just winging it on the TV screen. Yeah, the majority of the time I gave up with the two screen nonsense and just suffered through looking at the TV screen. Doing this, I would basically have to hover around an enemy shooting multiple times before finally killing them, or just automatically aiming just a little to the side of where the enemy is. This worked out better than constantly looking down, but there's no avoiding these controls. You're going to have to look down countless times in a playthrough. If I look at the gamepad, the chances of me taking damage from something on the TV are far greater. The vehicles in Star Fox Zero range in terms of controllability and fun. On Rails R-Wing is way better to control than the R-Wing in all range mode. In all range mode, you get complete control over the R-Wing, so now you have another thing to focus on. Not only does this become clunkier to control, but these sections are beyond slow and boring and become, where's the enemy? Oh, there they are, all the way over there. Let's go over there, pop some shots in. Where's the enemy? Oh, there they are. On Rails is way more accepting of the new control setup. I'm still not a fan of it, but being on Rails helps you focus more on the gamepad if you want to. 
The walker was a feature in the scrapped Star Fox 2. It was brought back here, and it's fine, I guess. It's just really awkward to control. The Landmaster returns, and it's all fun and games until that goes into all range mode, and it is just an absolute clunk fest, more so than the standard R Wing in all range mode. Controlling the Landmaster in a fully explorable environment is beyond clunky and is really not fun at all. And finally, the new vehicle, the Gyro Wing. Remember when I said I wish these controls were in a slower paced game? Well, the Gyro Wing sections are the slowest things in the entire game. These sections mainly have you flying around slowly, finding computers to hack into with your robot companion direct eye. These sections feel the most fitting with the gamepad controls as, for one, they just work here, and two, they make sense in terms of the context of what you are doing. It makes sense that, since you're now controlling the robot, that the robot's point of view is on the gamepad screen. The problem with these sections is that they are boring. They're literally, fly over here, let robot down, fly over here, let robot down. They aren't bad, but they aren't fun. The motion controls aren't the problem here, I think most Nintendo fans know this. Using gyro to aim a reticle is incredibly sensitive and accurate in most games. Think the bow and arrow controls in Breath of the Wild, or just the standard gyro controls in Splatoon. The problem is the over-reliance on the two-screen mechanic. This just does not work well at all in my opinion, and I understand these controls totally click with some people, and all I say is, I envy you guys. But even if you get used to the controls, the game's over by the time that happens. I originally played the game at launch in April 2016 and was so disgusted with the controls, I never beat it and I didn't play it for a year. Just this month, I picked it up again for this, and I found myself getting through the game much faster and having more fun. Now, of course, you may say, wow, you had fun with the game? And, uh, some fun. I definitely appreciated the game more the second time around, but that's the thing. It was on my second playthrough. This game really makes an awful first impression, and it's only until you know how the levels play out and the controls work that it starts to get remotely enjoyable. Star Fox Zero takes some time to get used to, and if this was a completely new experience, then I think I would be more willing to put more time into the game to learn the controls better and also be a little more lenient on their downsides. But this game is so similar to Star Fox 64 that I just ask myself, why am I not just playing that game? And that game had a lot more to keep the player coming back. Star Fox Zero doesn't do a lot other than the main story mode. Yeah, Star Fox is supposed to be played through multiple times, but this was released in 2016 for $50, not including Star Fox Guard. There's no online leaderboards, challenge mode, or competitive multiplayer in general. There is multiplayer, but it's basically splitting the controls in half, one person controlling the ship, the other firing. I've never played this way, but I heard it's leagues better than single player as it's way simpler for each player to control. However, this mode honestly feels pretty lazy to me as it doesn't feel like much effort at all had to go into this co-op mode. Why isn't there a local and or online competitive multiplayer? Yeah, the game really focuses on gamepad controls, but come on, they could have thrown in a 4 player battle mode that could be playable with just pro controllers. I know they were super into the whole two screen idea, and having the multiplayer not even focus on that at all would kind of tarnish the idea, but multiplayer is such a big part of Star Fox that it feels really empty and out of place to not have a battle mode. But even then, if the developers wanted the two screen experience and multiplayer, why isn't there online? That way everybody can have the two screen experience. Star Fox Command on the DS had online multiplayer, why does this not have anything close to that, not even online leaderboards? Star Fox Zero's graphics are probably the next most controversial thing about the game after the controls. They aren't bad, but they're boring, bland, and ooze miss potential. Flat and blurry textures run amok and color choice is far from superb. Instead of going for colors that pop, Zero goes for colors that look like they were mixed with mud. And for a space shooter with explosions happening all the time, Star Fox Zero's explosions are pretty weak. Just compare the explosions in Star Fox Zero to Breath of the Wild. Star Fox's explosions feel airy and flat while Breath of the Wild's feel three-dimensional and impactful. Now in motion, the game does look alright sometimes, and a lot of the backgrounds look pretty good. It definitely looks better running on your TV than it does on videos online. But I think what really hurts the game in my opinion, is the painfully simple geometry of the landscapes. It looks like a GameCube game in HD. Just look at the mountains, hills, ground, and the buildings. They all look jaggy and way too simple. Instead of looking like something an artist designed, a lot of the settings look like something that was designed with compromises and a low poly count. Now, many will point out that the graphics are so simple in Star Fox Zero because the game has to fully render two screens, both showing the same sequence from different angles while also maintaining a relatively steady frame rate. Sure, that can be considered impressive, and I would be fine with the simple geometric models and landscapes, 
if the art design was better. Star Fox Zero opts for simple models and bland art. Like, look at these buildings. It's like the director told the designers, go for a building motif on that building. There are sections of the graphics that look great though. The water effect in Corneria, for example, looks pretty good. I just wish everything else had more care put into it. The music's all right, I think it fits pretty well. The world map and Corneria music is great in my opinion, and while the soundtrack isn't really all that memorable, no specific track is bad. The voice actors from Star Fox 64 reprise their role, and I think it's great. When I think of Star Fox, these voices pop in my head, so it's definitely great that they're back. One of the biggest disappointments with Star Fox Zero was just how derivative it was. Like I said, this is basically Star Fox 64. A few things are different, but by and large, it's a retelling of that game. I think I would be more okay with this if half the games in the franchise weren't a retelling. Star Fox Zero is a retelling of Star Fox 64, which had its own retelling known as Star Fox 64 3D, which was a retelling of the original Star Fox. I understand that Star Fox is a pretty rocky franchise, it's gone through so much that it makes sense to keep it simple for the first entry in a decade, but they could have done a new story. These are astro animals, how hard is it to come up with a new plot, a new scenario, or new side characters? If you're a fan of Star Fox, Star Fox Zero is a Star Fox game. You just have to work for it more so than any other game in the franchise. I would have been more cool with that if the game wasn't just Star Fox 64. And because of that, I had a hard time liking this game. It just made me want to play Star Fox 64 instead. It felt like Nintendo wanted to new Super Mario Bros. defy Star Fox, creating a standard for the series to base itself off of for forthcoming releases and merchandise. Instead of doing something new, just take everything from Star Fox 64. Who wants new characters for fans to enjoy? Just rehash the same ones from 20 years ago. I feel that the content outside of the main game is severely lacking, the graphics are bland, and the controls are just not for me at all, and I feel that everybody will have problems with it at first, or throughout their entire playthrough. The controls don't make me feel empowered or like I'm really flying the R-Wing, they make me feel weak and stupid. I don't feel like a Star Fox, I feel like a loser. This is a game that needs time to get used to, but when it's just a rehash of Star Fox 64, you should just play that game instead. Star Fox Zero deep down had the heart of a good Star Fox game. It's just that everything around it to me was completely underwhelming, frustrating, or simply not good. With that said, on a grading scale of A to F, I give Star Fox Zero a solid not very good. Oh, that's where the deathy aftertaste came from. I should really work on my thumb placement more.